And welcome back to a News You Can Use podcast powered by B and Us LLC. Thank you to our sponsors, Frenchies, Wonders, Healthy Place Botanicals. Shop your natural brands, natural products, essential oils at Frenchies, Wonders, Healthy Place Botanicals. That's F R E N C H Y. W O N D E R S dot wonders D O N W O N D E R S at H E A L T H Y place P L A C E botanicals B O T A N I C A L S dot com. That's Frenchies Wonders Healthy Place to pe- Botanicals. My name is Frenchier. I am your host for A News You Can Use podcast. It is 4.44 p.m. Central Standard Time here in St. Louis. We are broadcasting live from the Bank of America building in, um, in on Lindell in St. Louis. Currently, the, t- the weather is, 50- is 60 degrees in St. Louis, 5.44 p.m. in New York, and it's 48 degrees. In Dallas, Texas, it's 69 degrees. Woo woo, what's up, Big D? It's my hometown. It's 10.44 p.m. in Lagos, Nigeria, and it's 83 degrees. It's 9.44 p.m. in Accra, Ghana, and it's 84 degrees. It is 5.45 p.m. in Havana, Cuba, and it is 87 degrees. Do make sure that you follow us on our social media platforms. That's B and us LLC. That's the word B, just like be you and be yourself. And us, LLC, that's on Facebook and Instagram at Frenchair. That's my name, F-R-E-N-C-H-A-I-R-E. On Twitter, it's Miss Frenchy 6 M-S-F-R-E-N-C-H-Y-0-6. Frenchie's Wonders on Pinterest. Subscribe and watch the videos on the B and Us LLC YouTube channel. And of course, we want you to shop our brands and market online at B E A N D U S L L C dot com. That's B and Us LLC dot com. Become a sponsor or a featured guest. Or add your products to the BNS LLC market. Message us on Facebook or Instagram or email us at Melchizedek LLC at gmail.com. M E L C H I Z E D E K L L C at gmail.com. Thank you so much for tuning in and make sure that you go ahead and Download the previous episodes of a News You Can Use podcast. Submit your positive music to the podcast by emailing to us or sending it over through our social media platforms. Make sure you go and shop Amber Bookstores, LLC. That's one of our partners. We are the webmaster and marketer for the Amber Bookstore, and we want you to go shop books, Shea Butter, Canaras, Art, and more. That's www.amberbookstores.com. www.amberbookstores. So I am just taking advantage of this little time before a legal shield meeting that I was invited to here in, I think this space is called Spaces, inside of the Bank of America building on Lindell. And it's my first time coming here and I already love how it's set up. I'm actually recording this episode, this segment right here live in one of the telephone booths. Looks like this space is an accelerator. So make sure you come in, come to 4625 Lindell in St. Louis, Missouri, and check out the spaces and see what kind of 
offerings they may be to help able to help you as a, and support you as an entrepreneur. Continue to send in your support and donations for the A News You Can Use podcast. Cash App, dollar sign B E A N D U S L L C. That's Cash App is dollar sign B E A N D U S L L C. Use any credit card, pay by PayPal. Our unique website is paypal.me slash friendshare, F-R-E-N-C-H-A-I-R-E. Or if you download the free Anchor.fm app, you can push the purple support this podcast button and contribute monthly. When you contribute $9.99 monthly, I receive more per dollar of your donations. Or if you are listening outside of Anchor, there should be a link and that you can click to support this podcast. We thank you for all of your donations and all of your support. Peace and blessings. Aquaba means welcome in Ghanaian. Welcome back to a News You Can Use podcast powered by BNS LLC, sponsored by Frenchie's Wonders Healthy Place Botanicals. Stay tuned and listen in to the Daily Fresh with John Lee Dumas as he explained why we take deep breaths for renewal and rejuvenation. The quote of the day comes from the Quotes Alarm free app. Everyone has oceans to fly if they have the heart to do it. Is it reckless? Maybe. But what do dreams know of boundaries? Everyone has oceans to fly if they have the heart to do it. Is it reckless? Maybe. But what do dreams know of boundaries? That's quoted by Amelia Earhart from the quotesalarm.com. Your heart don't know nothing about boundaries. Dreams don't either. Dreams just are boundless. We'll be back. Stay tuned. We'll be back. I'm going to take a little break. Please make me die a thousand deaths in a day, and then I won't jump in the front while you're down for a long time. Put the down for a long time. Assalamu alaikum. Peace. Shalom, shalom. Hotel. Yeah, MIT Records. BB Production. Venus Hot Top. Rhythmic Sign. Love to rap. Yo, check it out. All your local neighborhood stories. Diamonds, Diamonds by Rihanna. Shine bright like a diamond. Shine bright like a diamond. My light in a beautiful sea. I chose to be happy. You and I, you and I. We're like diamonds in the sky. You're a shooting star, I see. A vision of ecstasy. When you hold me, I'm alive. We're like diamonds in the sky. Find you there with me. Come on right away. Oh, right away. At first sight, I see we have the energy of serenity. I saw the life inside Shine bright like a diamond, shine bright like a 
Welcome back to a new You Can Use podcast powered by BNS LLC, sponsored by Reach, Rendering, Encouragement, and Capturing Hearts, Kim Mosby Summers, and Frenchie's Wonders Healthy Place Botanicals. Govern yourselves accordingly to these announcements. Your host, Frenchier, will be presenting at the Financial Education Fair April 3rd from 11 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at City Hall, Rotunda, 1200 Market Street, St. Louis, Missouri. The Financial Education Fair taking place April 17th, 2019 from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Slate, 1520 Market Street. The Financial Education Fair taking place at April 26th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at Better Family Life, 5415 Page. Do find all Money Smart Month events on the Money Smart Month website for St. Louis or whatever your state is. Just go Google Money Smart Month. That takes place in April. Kylar.io. That's spelled K Y. L A R dot I O. That's actually the website. Introducing Blockchain for Teens free workshop taking place April 13th, 2019 at Flow Valley for ages 13 through 18 years old. Register today because it is first come, first serve. If you, you lose, you lose. On eventbrite.com.
what students will learn. Intro to blockchain. Intro to cryptocurrency. Initial coin offerings. Cash, credit versus crypto. Government regulations. Legal form. Life insurance and beneficiaries. Taxes, wallets. Centralization versus decentralization. Kylar.io Blockchain Conference 2019 takes place in July. Go ahead and register for that as well. That's the Youth Entrepreneur Blockchain Conference taking place in July 2019. That's also on Eventbrite or go to the website Kylar.io. K Y L A R.io. Thank you. And see you at the unveiling, the subsequent unveiling of the Marvin Gaye Forever stamp in Grandel Square, April 3rd. Stay tuned for more pop up shops where you can actually purchase black books and cultural books and financial books, children's books, all kinds of books, shea butter, art, clothing, Canaris, with Amber Bookstore, LLC. Go to www.amberbookstores.com. You can also shop your books there as well. Thank you so much. Also, go to B and us llc.com that's b as in beautiful e as in everything a as in apple n as in nice d as in deliver u as in universal s as in superstar l as in light l as in love c as in charlie.com. That's B and us LLC.com. Thank you. We teach people how to overcome it. Peace and blessings. This is a news you can use podcast powered by B and us LLC. Thank you to our sponsors, Frenchies Wonders, Healthy Place Botanicals. We are broadcasting live from Irvin's house in St. Louis, Missouri. It is 10.05 p.m. Central Standard Time. And I'm talking right here with this dude, this brother named Diverse. And uh, he just said some interesting things that I just wanted to capture um, and congratulate him and uh, want y'all to support this brother, okay? What's going on, everybody? Uh, I appreciate y'all for listening in to her podcast. She seemed like a, a, a peace and blessings, you know. She, she, she's great. Man. I'm, I'm, I'm loving the vibe. But yeah, like she was saying, man, I'm, I, I've been blessed to put uh, a movement out called Finding Me. It's basically talking about going through your mess but overcoming it and knowing that you you better than what you went through. And only what you've been through is building characters, not build to destroy you. So. Mm. Uh, finding me is, is everything it's find, Everybody had a part in their life Where they didn't know who they were uh, Or they still trying to find out who they are sure. So uh, finding me is a movement So jump on it Just like you jump on anything else Thank you guys for listening but Diverse. You can find me on Clinton Diverse Mall At Facebook or Diverse Nations uh, On uh, Instagram Where's the tour? You said there's going to be a tour of your Oh, yeah, so the tour starts in Mount Vernon, Illinois it's on April 20th, and then we go to uh, Virginia in May. Uh, then we go to uh, Durham, Durham, North Carolina, uh, September 9th through the 11th, and then we, uh, we come back closer to this way, and we go to Atlanta, to, and then we, and we stop back home to uh, Missionary Baptist Church. How do we get the tickets? Uh, the tickets on Im- 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 Eventbrite, but uh, I don't know... I don't know if you if you're not from St. Louis or those certain towns. There's the promoters in those towns, so uh, okay. it's actually the, their information that they're doing. Sure. Uh, I'm just bringing my play to their theater, performing. I'm, 
it's so beautiful. I've acted in plays since yeah. I was a little kid. So, um, so just hearing being with a black brother that has made one is amazing. We already know that Irvin is a creator, and he's he's doing his thing, and he's going away to do more great things. Right, right. So, how did you? come up with this play or how do, where, have you been writing forever I it, or what no. what's your experience no. uh, when I started off writing music and all that stuff but I didn't have a, uh, I found out the music really had some evil as ways that I was not willing to participate in you okay. know anything that can bring negativity to my life or my uh, my circle my in my atmosphere, I, I, I stay away from. You know what I'm saying? So writing plays, it allows me to create the space that I want. That's so beautiful. You know what I'm that's saying? That's what I love about being an artist. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, uh, that's what that's what made me get into it. And I, I love to act. I love to, to portray something, the realness and the rawness of it. Even yes. if it's bad, I want people to see the, all the badness in it. Because we're finding me, you have a character in there that's just like anybody, nephew, uncle, uh, or stepdad, that... Some people we overlook and say like, they seem so nice and all that. So my character shows, yes, that person can be nice, but it's a it's a it's, it's a uh, intent behind it. Okay. And so I show the ugly and the raw, so you understand it. Not that I just want to show it. I want you to understand that person when they're in front of you. Yeah. See? You need to understand. So finding me is about giving a raw because you cannot find yourself by living a lie. You have okay. to be who you are and and be proud of who you are, even if you're a mess. You got to. And so tell the truth. So that's what finding me about. Y'all, I really literally just met this brother. I just met this brother, but his spirit resonated with me and, and, and mine with his. And I'm so grateful that we, we spoke because he's got a tour, a whole play. He's written a play and a whole tour. So I, that's amazing. And I celebrate. I celebrate him again. Please tell us again how we contact you. How we get in contact with you again. Uh, like I said, uh. You can follow me on my uh, my Facebook page, Diverse. You can look me up or Clinton Diverse Mall is my personal profile. Or what are you saying? Clinton who? Clinton Diverse Mall, like the bomb barbecue sauce, M A U L. Or if you want to find me uh, on Instagram, it's Diverse Nation. But other than that, I'm at every uh, uh, place in the city. So trust and believe me, if you you are somebody to be uh, met, I will meet you. My energy will meet you. Just like me. Already, peace and blessings. We out. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna dance a little bit with Irvin. Celebrate before he leave uh, St. Louis. Peace and blessings. We out. Check this out. Yo, 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 yo. beats is popping. Check, 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 check this out. Check this out. St. Louis very own hit record release. Love songs. Marvin Gaye would have been 80 years old. It's been 47 years since What's Going On, the album which is six in the Rolling Stones top 500 and greatest albums of all time. Ooh, that's wonderful. Yes, that's wonderful. There was a ceremony in Hollywood for Marvin Gaye from the United States Postal Services. Uh, there is a unveiling of a Marvin Gaye commemorative forever stamp. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. My thinking right. was that Marvin Gaye is oh, universal. God. It belongs to all of us and not just Hollywood. Yes. I contacted the United States Postal Services to ask why we could not have an unveiling in St. Louis, Missouri. They then said yes, and then they came back and they said, well, it might be too confusing, but what we will do is something that we've never done before. So on April 3rd at the Grandale Theater in St. Louis, Missouri, the United States Postal Service is collaborating with a group of artists, and we will be having a what they call a subsequent unveiling of the Forever Stamp for Marvin Gaye, and it is of the first issue of the Postal Service. What time? Seven o'clock in the morning in Randall Square in the Grand Arts Center District.
Everybody's invited. It's free and open to the community at no charge. Uh, we're excited about it because they're excited about it. Um, and today I had opportunity because I don't know if you know a backstory on what's going on is that there were two NFL football players who met him and became friends. And when um, the song was introduced to him from two of the four tops, Marvin didn't want to do it. And so they encouraged him and he was like, no, I don't want to do it. Let the originals do it. And then uh, these football players, one is Lem Borney and also Mel Farr. Uh, we've become very good friends and, and, mm -hmm. yeah, yes. like and so they encouraged him and he said well i don't want to do it but the only way i'll do it is if you would do it with me <laughs> and he taught them the language and whatever else so when you hear hey man what's going on that's those two guys and so mel far had a heart attack and passed away unfortunately and I've been able to reach out to Mr. Uh, Barney, mm -hmm. and we're hopeful that he will be in St. Louis to tell people about his role. And he's got a gold record when Marvin received one oh, wow. for what's going on. Mm -hmm. Additionally, I reached out in the research to find the photographer who shot that album. And he's been kind enough to give me a limited use of the images mm -hmm. and so uh i have reached out to some former clients who are going to blow the images up mm -hmm. uh so that's what you'll see when you come in granddale and also there's commemorative book and uh we'll also have those images from that album in the book so we're inviting everybody to come out the books are free come and join us and let's uh say to this man yeah. mm -hmm. hello thank you for the work that you've done you. and so we'll be doing a series of interviews one starting tomorrow at uh 95.5 uh at two o'clock mm -hmm. uh there's one with bernie hayes at eight o'clock in the morning on thursday there's also one with christine mullen on uh april 2nd at 12 noon and there's also a tentative schedule with uh channel two news so thank you and margie uh, hollis margie. made it all happen yay and marvin gay's sister and his uncle or somebody was there
Leave me a voice message to let me know what's happening with you. Abarigani, what's the news? Abarigani means what's the news? What's the good good news? What's the word in Swahili? Rise in power to our dear brother Marvin Gaye, to my sister Shanette Michon Anderson, my cousin Jimmy Washington, my business partner Roland Young. My brother and in, in my life's works who who I dedicate along with my children, Joseph Jr., French Hair II, Melchizedek, and Sarai. Dedicate my, my life's work to, to this brother, Toby T. Lee of Tight Vision. Tight media, tight vision media. Rise and power, Darren Sills, Michael Brown Jr. Von Derrick Myers. Too many to name. Sanford Gilmore, my cousin. We give thanks and moment of silence to all of our transition ancestors. Thank you to Margie Hollins, who announced, made the great announcements about the Marvin Gaye unveiling that's taking place of the Forever Stamp. It's taking place at the Grandel Square here in St. Louis, Missouri. It's open and it's free. It's April 3rd. But we want to say shouts out to Margie Hollins, our elder uh, mama, Margie Hollins. We're grateful for you for organizing the event for us. Blessings to you. See y'all there. Thank you. On oh, first and fifth grade. At Dale Woods Rec Center for boys football. Girls too. Girls and friends. I'm trying to help you. You gotta speak in four sentences and not fragments, right? Okay, we done. Turn you. So, first through fifth grade, girls and boys up to 10 years old you can come to the rec center on Delwood on Sundays for conditioning let's get them some scholarships this brother's supporting the children also support Kenan Morris and I just heard about his, his mentor boys mentor program the village we celebrate Sir Irvin Williams the third Black excellence, black directors matter. He's amazing and he's leaving us to go and let his wings fly. So it's time to move. Y'all ain't trying to do nothing, get on out the way. We, 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 we trailblazing around here. Peace and blessings. See you when you get there by Coolio, featuring 40 Thieves. Now I 
I've seen places and faces and things you ain't never thought about thinking. If you ain't peeped, then you must be drinking and smoking. Pretending that you're looking, but you're broken. Let me get you open. Now, little Timmy got his diploma, and little Timmy got life. And Tamika around the corner just took her person off the pipe. The other homie shot the other homie and ran off with his money. And when the other homie talked about it, they thought that it was funny. But who's the dummy? Because now you done lost the hustler. A down ass brother done been replaced by a buster. And though I got love for you, I know I can't trust you. Because my crew is rolling lures and your crew is rolling dozens. And just because of that, you act like you don't like a brother no more. I guess that's just the way it go. I ain't trying to preach. I believe I can reach, but your mind. I see you when you get there. I see you when you get there. When Temptation and faith, I guess we're living for the day. I seen a man get swept off his feet by a boy with an AK. The situation so twisted, everybody getting lifted. I'm just trying to take care of my kids and handle my business. Cause it's way too serious, so you gotta pay close attention. So you don't get caught slipping when it comes to do all the getting. Life is a big game, so you gotta play it with a big heart. Some of us gotta run a little faster, but we gotta lay the start. But I'll be a fool to surrender when I know I can be a contender. If everybody's a sinner, then everybody can be a winner. No matter your rag color, deep down we all brothers. And regardless of the time, Somebody up there still loves us. I'm a step on the struggle, which I'm proud and weak. I done strive my whole life to make it to the mountain peak. Always keep reaching, sure to grab on to something. I'll be there when you get there with what the sounds bumping. I'll see you when you get there. When you gonna get there? I'll see you when you get there. I'll see you when you get there. When you gonna get there? You need to loosen up and live a little. And if you got kids, let them know how you're feeling for your own sake. Give a little. Oh, you don't want to hear that. You've been trying to stack and keep up with the Joneses. Taking advantage of your own. The rhythm's homies that you've been doing for the longest. You still ain't missing a good thing until it's gone. We have built an empire, not for the jealousy that you buy. Because we prefer to keep your eyes shut to this right when it's something involved that we desire. So hold your head up high if you're poor and righteous. I know time seems right. And problems seem in this foot of time to despair. We got to pull ourselves together. And if you feel you're out the game, then you need to get back in. Because that's worse than a quitter. You got to face responsibility one day, my brother. So wrap up your pity and turn it to ambition. to put your ear go and drive and stop by my side. As we walk down the road of our destiny, and the time comes to choose which shall it be, the wide and crooked or the straight and narrow. We got one push to hear, one like to live. Stand up for something, I like to in the game. Listen to the songs that we sing. It's up to you to make it be. I guess I'll see you and you see me. I'll see you. And welcome back to a News You Can Use podcast powered by BNS LLC, sponsored by Frenchie's Wonders Healthy Place Botanicals. Reading from the ACLU.org website, the article is titled Congress is Trying to Use the Spending Bill to Criminalize Boycotts of Israel and Other Countries by Kate Ruan. Senior Legislative Council, ACLU, December 10th, 2018, 615 p.m. According to recent reports, congressional leaders from both sides of the aisle are planning to sneak a bill criminalizing politically motivated boycotts of Israel into the end of the year omnibus spending bill. The bill's original sponsor, Senator Ben Cardin, 
Democrat from Maryland is pushing Democratic leadership to include this bill, which has not moved forward thus far primarily because it violates the First Amendment. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer, Democrat from New York, and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Democrat from California, are reportedly leaning towards slipping the text into the spending bill which needs to pass for the government to stay open. The ACLU has opposed the Israel Anti-Boycott Act through its multiple iterations because the bill would make it a crime to participate in political boycotts protected by the First Amendment. Now the bill's sponsors are attempting to avoid public scrutiny by including the bill's unconstitutional criminal penalties and must-pass legislation scheduled for a vote just days before Congress's holiday recess, likely because it will be harder to pass in the new Congress. Earlier versions of the Israel Anti-Boycott Act would have made it a crime, possibly even subject to jail time, for American companies to participate in political boycotts aimed at Israel and its settlements in the occupied Palestinian territories when those boycotts were called for by international governmental organizations like the United Nations. The same went for boycotts targeting any country that is, in quotes, friendly to the United States, out quotes, if the boycott was not sanctioned by the United States. Last week, the ACLU saw an updated version being considered for inclusion in the spending bill, though this text is not publicly available. While Hill offices claim the First Amendment concerns have been resolved and potential jail time has indeed been eliminated as a possible punishment, the bill actually does nothing to cure its free speech problems. Furthermore, knowingly violating the bill could result in criminal financial penalties up of up to $1 million. Were this legislation to pass, federal officials would have a new weapon at their disposal to chill and suppress speech that they find, found objectionable or politically unpopular. Consider, for example, if the United Nations advocated boycotting Saudi Arabia in response to the murder of Jamal Khashoggi, the Washington Post journalist or Russia in response to his alleged election interference around the world. That would mean American companies, small business owners, and even nonprofits, potentially some religious institutions and people acting on their behalf in support of the boycott could be subject to criminal penalties. This is a full-scale attack on Americans' First Amendment freedoms. Political boycotts, including boycotts of foreign countries, have played a pivotal role in this nation's history from the boycotts of British goods during the American Revolution to the Montgomery bus boycott to the campaign to divest from apartheid South Africa, and NAACP versus Claiborne Hardware, the Supreme Court made clear that the First Amendment protects the right to participate in political boycotts. Although the bill states that nothing in the act, in quotes, shall be construed to diminish or infringe upon any right protected under the Constitution of the United States, out quotes, such hollow assurances do not undo its core purpose of penalizing First Amendment activities and silencing speech. Members of Congress who support this bill should take note of the fact that just this year, two federal courts blocked state laws seeking to suppress boycotts of Israel. The, those laws, like many copycats around the country, required state contractors to certify that they are not participating in boycotts of Israel as a condition of doing business with the state. The courts agreed with the ACLU that these anti-boycott laws violate Americans' First Amendment rights. The Israel Anti-Boycott Act is another page from the same unconstitutional playbook. It is clear why congressional leaders fear an open debate on this legislation. Restricting Americans' freedom of expression is rarely a popular policy, but that is no excuse for smuggling controversial new crimes into a last-minute appropriations package. If the First Amendment means anything, is that the government cannot suppress political expression it doesn't like. Whatever their views on the Israel-Palestine conflict, members of Congress should oppose any effort to include this unconstitutional law within the omnibus spending bill. Americans' First Amendment rights are at stake. And then she asked us to sign up for the ACLU's best reads and get our finest content for the week. Okay. 
Thank you so much. Kate Ruan, R-U-A-N, Senior Legislative Counsel of ACLU. Thank you for writing this article. Congress is trying to use the spending bill to criminalize boycotts of Israel and, and other countries on the ACLU.org website. Do leave us messages on what your thoughts is in regards to this bill and what is going on with Israel and Palestine. What are your thoughts, attorneys? How can you get involved with this legislation? I write letters to your Congress and your senators asking people them to keep our First Amendment rights intact. Thank you so much. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. St. Louis dropping, popping, popping, popping. Black, black bodies on the line. Let the creator elevate your mind. New hits like this, like this. But three, you're out, no mistake. That's the way the pitch break. My old man. Sleeping in his the redemption kitchen. song by the V. Sometimes Nelson. grumbling and complaining, but always keeping on. A garden of fragrant flowers. Then you, woman child, last poet, you know it. Flowering garden of my heart, and my heart opened to you. Pick it up at the local neighborhood like store. It's 620 p.m. Central Standard Time on March 23rd. Saturday, March 23rd, 2019. And I want to thank y'all for tuning in to the podcast. I'm, but I'm really, I'm troubled. And I just wanted to get on the, come on the air and um, share with you and also get your feedback. I was leaving the store near my home, a block, not less than a block from my home. And I'm waiting to make a left turn to make another turn <laughs> to go home. And uh, it's a one-way street, you know, one one lane traffic going both ways. And um, I actually find myself doing it too. I find myself being impatient because this used to be a two-lane street now it's been decreased to a one lane street about going to both directions and it gets frustrating because it's a busy street and it's a lot of traffic so i find myself passing people on the road in in the wrong lanes doing illegal things so that's why it's so disturbing for me because it could be me so i watched a car that was already in the one lane going uh, south and they they were moving pretty fast the speed limit is probably only 35 35 on the street and they looked like they were going 50 you know even if it was 45 it looked they they were moving pretty fast and I definitely dared not to to pull out in front of them to make my turn in front of them so anyway there's a truck. So usually, and I'm this is in St. Louis. I'm talking about kind of local stuff. This is in St. Louis. So if you're you're f- familiar with St. Louis, Missouri, then you're familiar with the intersections at Union and Dr. Martin Luther King headed towards Page Boulevard. So crossing Martin Luther King Boulevard on Union Boulevard is a one it's a one lane street. It's one lane both both directions. So the woman is is driving the truck to pass a car that's speeding. She's on the right side trying to get over to the left to pass this truck, but there's cars parked on the right side in front of her. So she's trying to do two things, miss these cars that are parked on the right side and also speed and fast enough to pass this car to get in the left lane because her, her, her road is running out. 
So instead of just slowing down and waiting, you know, till she can merge to that left lane, she tried to pass, and man, y'all, oh, she lost control of her truck. I watched it flip over several times to hit a light pole, take the light pole down. She was hurt severely. I'm just so grateful, you know, the ancestors have something for her. You know, still there's still more for her to do on this planet because her her ancestors kept her on this planet because she could have been dead. She flew out of the truck, y'all. This is why you have to wear seatbelts. Seatbelts save my life. I wear seatbelts every time a seatbelt works. You know, and I'm kind of holding, I'm gripping the seatbelt when it don't don't when it doesn't work. Cause, cause when I was twenty two or twenty three years old, the seatbelts is what saved my life. Cause I could have done that same thing. I hit the walls of the highway. My car spent around three or four times in the middle of the highway and hitting the walls each time. So had it not been because both 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 of the windows, front window and the back windows were broken out, taken out. Had I not had that seatbelt on. I wouldn't even be here to even have or think about or talk to you about a news you could use podcast or even this experience, you know, so. Where are y'all seatbelts? I watched that woman fly out that car, that truck. Um, fortunately, you know, it's Saturday, so it was a bunch of people out. We were out, and across the street where this all happened is a mechanic shop, and they ran because the truck was on fire. Even though there's ambulances, stations, like a firehouse, probably five, seven minutes away, you know, that how that goes. You know, all of us started calling 911 at the same time. We're all on hold. Fortunately, someone did get through. But, man, this woman is on the ground, bleeding, contorted. Her dog is dead. It's smashed up under the the uh, um, the electric pole. We don't even know if there's a baby or any other humans inside of the truck. And it was just scary. It was scary and frightening. And um, even though she's been taken away by the ambulance and I'm, I'm at home, you know, snug on my couch, I'm not snug and comfortable in my spirit. I, that was traumatic. That was yet, I've never experienced yet another <laughs> traumatic experience. Taking my deep breaths, y'all, because I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not having an anxiety attack, but I'm anxious that they're really death is really so close to my door. You know, it's so close because it could be me. That's why I'm I'm really tripping because I know I be- behave crazily or or stupidly or ignorantly. Are haphazardly like that, trying to get somewhere. I got to get there. Got to get there. I'm running late. I leave late. And got to get there, trying to make the time. They taking too long. Y'all taking too long on the roads. You know, so anxious, trying to go, trying to get there, trying to get there. You know, for what? To die? To, to injure myself? To injure someone else? To kill somebody else, possibly because of, I'm, of my haste and my rushing, because I did I, I I didn't manage my time right, poor time management. It's so not fair. We got to slow down, y'all. <sighs> I'm shaking up. Her her family came. You know they. You know she has cell phone. People are calling. You know, trying to get in touch with her people before the ambulance take her off. Her poor friend show up. He he was just fucked up over just the dog. Just just walking up before you get to her, his girlfriend find out is his dog laying up under 
the city stri- street light pole guts hanging out, smashed up under the light pole. Gory. And then his girlfriend at, at death's door, bloody, contorted, in pain. Man, I'm just, I fucked up. <laughs> Shit. What y'all got to say? You know, I went to a, there's an organization here called Alive and Well. And I went to uh, their trauma workshop. I got certified for trauma. You can, you can, you and your organization can sign up for it. Just look up Alive and Well in St. Louis. It's needed. If you're an organization that serves people, you should know about trauma and how it affects people and how it affects people's behavior and their mental, mental health or, or illness. I don't remember the exact number, but they said that if you experience some kind of trauma, be it sexual, mental, emotional, physical, some kind of trauma or abuse before the age of nine years old, it increases the... Perpetuous, or maybe that's not the right word. The it, it increases the occurrence of you experiencing more traumas in, later in your life. So blessed to you who live, live, lived <clears throat> beautiful, pure, innocent, untainted lives. As children, and blessed to you, parents who provide healthy, whole, well rounded, peaceful, loving environments for their children. I'm grateful for you. I pray that for my children every day. I'm now with them. I have I have actually have children that I bore out of my womb, that I spent nine months in pain and agony and discomfort and joy and sadness and mourning. You know, nine months I spent with four babies. That's thirty six months out of my life. I uh, cultivated four children. Joseph Jr., who was a miracle because at 16 years old, they said that I, I'm not going to tell y'all my story. Y'all going to have to write the book. Y'all going to have to buy the book later on this year that my book, my autobiography will be coming out. But I'll say this. Every episode of A News You Can Use podcast is dedicated to my children. Joseph Jr., French Hair 2. Melchizedek, Malcolm X, and Sarai. I love you so much. And one day, I'm so grateful that this this podcast is now archived into world history. So one day, no matter how old you are, dear ones, you'll be able to hear your mother express how much she loves you and how much she misses you and how much... You mean them, mean everything to her, and that life just ain't the same without you. But I'm living, I'm living with the expectation that we will be together one day, and we will, and I'm gonna, we will, we will live to see that day. Uh, my ex-husband and I didn't love each other, and we abused each other, and my children witnessed it. Our children witnessed it. <laughs> And um, although I don't think we physically assaulted them, they ate every day. They were loved. They were given all the attention. They were homeschooled. They were with their mom and daddy most 24 hours a day. 
most times. Um, <clears throat> but they saw things that they shouldn't have seen as a result of my ex-husband and I not loving each other. And I laugh at him because eight years later, after we've been separated, I thought I ran away from him, Memorial Day 2011. I laugh at him because today he texts me on my, my Google line. Hey, Fred Chair, I was wondering how you doing? And I flip out on the other end. I flip out and say, you motherfucker. You didn't take care of your children, our children, nor myself when you had us. And I ran away from you so much so that you hurt me so much that I literally ran away from you and ran 700 miles away from you. And just because now I'm a public phenom, you can reach out and touch me and you think you got a right to question me about how I'm doing but you you ain't thinking about the four children we bore into the world that you just just haven't you don't ask about them you ain't tried to talk to them you ain't nothing you just disconnected you just thinking about your fucking self so I just think about like the parents whose rights have been terminated. Where's the support for us? Where is the support? As I know I'm not the only one because I've talked to other people who have children on this planet that they don't, they don't have custody over anymore. Their rights are terminated for whatever reason. I'm not to judge. That's one good thing about living this life after you done bought you some some sense and you some experiences and really lived and gone through some things because life isn't all about just happy times. It's definitely not about happy times. Happy times are only great because you've experienced the, the doom, the doom, the gloom, the darkness, the pains, the storms. Those good times only only so good because you've been you've experienced the lows. You you can you ain't you don't take life for granted. You don't take things for granted because you've been through some things. You've experienced pain. So I've experienced a lot of pain. And so every day I strive, you know, today I, I strive to live in joy. And flow in peace and understanding and wisdom. Kindness. Discernment. Did I say peace and joy? Abundance. High vibrations and high frequencies. Knowing that I'm open and supported fully by the universe and my ancestors. And I'm so grateful. Live in a spirit of gratefulness and gratitude because I know where I come from. I'm humble. I know where I came from. Okay. I'm not going to cry. But I know where I come from. And um, when you live on the planet, alive, breathing, talking to people, Touching people, hugging people, laughing with people, talking to the babies, admonishing the babies, celebrating the children and the youth. But you can't touch the ones that came out of your womb. Oh, y'all, that's a great pain that, that nothing can feel. <laughs> There's no met not amount of a meditation that soothes me. And matter of fact, I just, I'm looking at a postcard from when I went to Texas for Christmas, this past Christmas. I, I picked up a postcard and sent it to my children. 
stated January 2nd, 2019. It came back to me. It just came back to me. Undeliverable as address, unable to forward. My children have been adopted. They were adopted about four years ago. And um, I haven't seen them since. And I barely talk to them. And uh, their mother makes sure that I don't get to know them. She's not allowing me to be in their life. It's a close, a close adoption. I had nothing to do with it. Like I said, my rights were terminated. <laughs> and um, to know that I have four children, 13-year-old boy, 12-year-old daughter, Ten year old son and a nine year old daughter in this in the United States <laughs> and I'm not being allowed to know what's going on in their lives. You know abuse lies in secrecy. If you didn't know, I'm telling you. I'm a witness, I bear witness. I, I <laughs> You got to you got to really be careful for what you pray and ask for. I'm telling you, and I'm admonishing you and and extolling you to be careful what you pray for cuz everything that you ask for out of your mouth and out of your the depths of your souls you're going to get it. Might take might take a day, a second, a minute, years, but you're going to get all of it. I was raised in, in, in the Catholic schools, Catholic Dallas, 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 Dallas Catholic system from fir first grade through 12th grade in the Dallas Catholic Diocese school systems. And Also, during that same time, I was reared in the Baptist church, Southern Baptist churches. You see the conflict already, right? That's why I ain't got no religion right now. I'm Pan-African. Try to be as spiritual as possible, connected to my ancestors. Burn some sage and a candle. Some herb, drink some herbs. Smoke some herbs. Herbal tea. Drink some herbal tea. <laughs> Meditate. You know, be still, quiet, touch, go talk to the trees type shit. But my point in saying that was I can't remember right now. Just lost my train of thought. I was raising these schools. And now I was taught a certain thing, but I didn't live it. And then my parents abused me in ways I don't understand. I understand now, but you know I didn't understand as a child growing up. I didn't even understand that it was abuse because you know whatever it is that your parents teach you, you just accept that as just what it is. That's that's what the way of life. So that's why parents is is very important. It's very important that you're instilling real truths, like real values, and real setting real good examples for children. You know, because whatever it is, if you whatever it is you're modeling modeling them more than even what you're saying, that's what they're going to go on. They're going to go on and grow up on, and that's what they're going to believe is is what life in the world is 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 set on. That's the perspective you're giving them. You have a great, great, great responsibility on your head. So if you're you're a person without children right now, I ask that you keep guarding yourself. Keep 
protecting yourself with condoms. I even even at stole you and 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 beg you to to abstain from sex. Now now that I I didn't <laughs> now that I didn't listen to Mama, I'm asking that you abstain from sex if you have it, even if you're an adult, even if you're 21, 30. If you haven't had sex, I say don't until you until that person marries you. Because when you give it up, you taking you giving away yourself. You have no idea how much value you are. You're so valuable. Boy, girl, woman, man, you're so valuable. You're so valuable. And when you give away yourself with sex, it devalues you. It sexually objectifies you. Like you're a piece of meat. It's not about it's when you when you look when you get when you having sex before marriage, it's lust and infatuation is not love. Because if they loved you, they'd be willing to wait until you got married, and then y'all really consummated a real live agreement, or at least y'all go into some kind of contractual partnership, life partnership. You know, y'all, y'all commit to your, each other. You know, it's just. Sex ain't willy nilly, but that's a whole nother topic. But I'm just saying, where's the support for the families? For the parents, the mothers, the fathers who are separated, the grandparents who are separated for their, from their children, their biological children. That are either adopted or in foster care. I so fucked up. I I watched it. I literally modeled my sister's life. My transition sister, Shawnette Michonne Anderson, I modeled her life. She had three children, my nephews and my niece. Not even going to name them because they don't fuck with me and I don't fuck with them. I love them in general because they're my sister's kids, but they got her evil spirit. And they are resentful towards her. And I believe that they project all of their energy since they can't put it on her since she's not physically on the planet. They put it on my mother and I and they don't fuck with us. So we don't fuck with I don't fuck with them. Like I don't fuck with most of my family. I'm the black sheep. It's going to be funny when I hear from them when 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 the money starts flowing in. But I already know who's real, who ain't. But where's the support for the families who missing their babies? Who can't touch their kids, can touch every other kid but their own? Where's the support for that? Leave a message if you know where there's some some support. You know, because I'm under the whole feeling that some, one day I'm just going to drive to where they are. Because who's going to tell me where I can't go? I can take a vacation to that state, that city, and just show up. I mean, lawyers, attorneys, y'all tell me. I don't know at all. You know, I want y'all to email me, you know, leave a message, Facebook, Instagram message. BNS LLC, let let me know what's what what are my ramifications? What what am I able to do? I know I have no rights. I know that this person legally owns my na- my children. Their name have been legally changed. They've been with her four years, and she literally told me two weeks ago that my children didn't want to talk to me. They don't know me. And my, my response was, they don't know me because you you refuse to allow me to get to know them. You ref- refuse. And all of my um attempts to get to get to know you and them. And I also reminded her or even let her know that their foster mother, that the foster parents that can that they came from allowed me to see my children. We Skyped every week. We was in communication. We read it to each other. We I'd help them with their homework. 
I was active in their lives. And as a, as a result, they were emotionally well. They were emotionally well. This woman don't care nothing about my kids, my children, y'all. It hurts to know that my children ain't being cared for like they supposed to. It hurts to not be able to. When you, don't no one loves your your stuff like you do. You want I want to say nobody loves your shit like you do. Well, that's the physical things, but I'm talking about my babies that I bore out my pussy. That I, I that I spent thirty six months ba- holding them in my tummy, touching them, bonding with them. My oldest, I spent six years with. My baby, she was just a baby. She wasn't even a year old when she was taken into foster care. My kids was kidnapped. The Dallas Child Protective Services kidnapped my children. I got to go take a break, y'all. I got to regroup, get my, my emotions in check. Thank you so much. And welcome back to the News You Can Use podcast. Did you know that your support keeps this podcast alive, keep episodes getting recorded, new content created, research, just gives me the power and the energy to continue to create more news you can use. Time that I, the the hours per episode and per marketing sessions that I spend creating this for you takes away from me uh, participating in any other income driven activities. So your support is needed to sustain future episodes of the News You Can Use podcast and also for leveling up because I want to make this better for you. I have a logo getting worked up for you and connecting with other vendors so that we can we can really just be set up just like the when I talk about sponsorship, we can set up just like the radio stations do. The radio stations come and they show up. They set up a whole music DJ, have a DJ to attract business to your your um to drive clients and customers to your store your, or your physical location. And that's the whole point of the News You Can Use podcast. And so your support is need, needed. You can contribute monthly um, by clicking the support this podcast button on the Anchor app. When you give $9.99 monthly, I get as the creator get 13% more per dollar. So I'm really grateful for you and continue to give and and show your support and love. Thank you. Engage. Let's connect. Ujama Cooperative Economics. Kiss You Back by Digital Underground. Kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. 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 I'll
hoping that you hear me, cause I love it when you hear me. And I'm telling you sincerely that if you kiss me, girl, I'll kiss you back. Cause I really, really, really like you, and I just wanna make it clear. We're gonna keep it fair and square. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. Yo, it's not funny. Real cute is what you say to me. But any other way you're playing me, if you love me, then I'll love you back. When you say I get the most out of it, it's a kind of robbery. A fair exchange and no robbery. Love me, girl, and I love you back. Love me, girl, and I love you back. Now I'm hoping that you hear me, cause I love it when you hear me. And you know I know you need it, so I guess that we could do it. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. Alright, sing it with me again. Come on. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. Come on, keep it going. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. Yeah. Ladies. Love me, boy, I love you back. Oh, yeah. Yo, I'm with it. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. Alright, alright, that's cool. Now let's change it up a little bit. If you play with my tummy, I'll tell you. If you play with my tummy, I'll tell you. If you touch me here, I'll touch you there. Yeah, put lotion on me. Kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. I'll kiss you back. If you love me, girl, I'll love you back. We know what you go through, sometimes we put you down. People treat you cold, and they know you sleep around. We never want to disrespect you, and I'll never tell anyone in town. But if you love me, then I'll love you back. I'm asking if you're down. I'm hoping that you hear me, because I love it when you near me. You kiss me, and I'll kiss you back. You know I know you know I know you know this, so I guess that we can do this. Kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. No, I'm saying. I mean, how about that? If it's a deal to you, it's a deal to me. For sure. Yo, let's kick it one more time. Come on, kiss me. Kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. If you kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. Kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. If you feel my feet, I'll tickle your tummy. If you love me, boy, I love you back. Yeah, I like when the girls do it. If you love me, boy, I love you back. Come on, ladies, one more time, kick it. If you love me, boy, I love you back. So if you kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. But if you hit me, then I'll hit you back. Smack you, I'll smack you back. If you scratch me here, I'll scratch you there. If you kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. If you kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. If you kiss me, girl, I'll kiss you back. If you touch me here, I'll touch you there. If you kiss me, then I'll kiss you back. Yeah. Yo, this is pumping. Yo, shock is pumping, man. This sounds like something I do. I hear you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Except I do it like this. Hit it, girls. If you pinch my nose, I'll play with your toes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, if you look real cutie, I'll play with your booty. Yeah. Yeah. Check it. Yo, look, if you hold my nuts. All right, that's enough. That's enough. What? No, all right. No, no, huh? Come on, man. All right, no, all right, no. All right. Let's just keep it cool. You know what I'm saying? If you kiss me, then I'll kiss you Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Hold yeah. my nose. Uh huh. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Just having fun with it, man. Don't let's go. Let's go. I'll kiss you back. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Alright. Yeah. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Yeah. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. Yeah. Kiss me and I'll kiss you back. See me, Coco, my Coco. Me, Coco, and I might go pop. See me, Coco, my Coco. 